if there's any conflict of interest amongst the council members. No, oh, thank you very much. Looking for the adoption of the published agenda for Monday, December the 21st. Councilor Snively and Councilor Bjorkman. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Okay, I'm sorry. Cheryl. <laughs> Item 4, Adoption of Minutes, November 30th, 2015, Special Council Meeting. Moved by Councilor Bonnie, supported by Councilor Bjorkman. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item B, December 3rd, 2015, Special Council Meeting. Moved by Councilor Bjorkman, Deputy Mayor Malash. Supports? Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item C, December 7th, 2015, regular council meeting. Support. Moved by Councilor Bundy, supported by Councilor Snively. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 7, reports from administration. A, infrastructure and development report number drainage 2015-10. And this is for the appointment of an engineer for improvements to the SACAS drain. Owned by Councilor Bonnie, supported by Councilor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries, I think. Item B, Corporate Services, report number 2015-025. And this is an amending bylaw number 1475 for the Animal Care and Control Bylaw. And there are two recommendations that are provided for Council's consideration. by Councillor Bonney, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Councillor Bonney. Thank you. So I, just so everybody knows, I think this is how I interpret it, that the bylaw is changing, so now the uh, OPP officer, we just have to have his name and badge number, and it has to be served within two business days. So it just kind of tightens it up rather than it lingering there for four or five weeks. Within two business days, they just need the officer's num name and, and badge number. So I like the changes. Mrs. Hunter. Through your worship, uh, the other change is that there's no longer a signature required by the OPP officers, so therefore we're, we're not waiting for them to be on shift in order to get the paperwork done. Thank you. Any further? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Item 8, Correspondence A, Thomas and Elizabeth Handgartner of 235 Star Beach Road regarding landscaping encroachment onto municipal lands. Councilor Snively. Um, we're not going to have these people speak, eh, tonight? Well, it's up to us. Uh, I, I don't think they need to uh, speak. Um, all this is doing basically is uh, the encroachment. That land is not being used, used for anything. And I, all this is doing is beautifying the area. I, I don't see a problem with this whatsoever. Uh, they've been doing it for, for quite a long time. It's been there and I, I think the neighbors are here tonight and uh, they do agree with it. And there, I don't see any objection to it whatsoever. So. I, I would move that uh, we allow this to, to carry on. I don't see a problem with it at all. First of all, I think we just need to receive the report and then we'll discuss it, okay? Sure. So you're going to move the receipt and I'll, I'll, Deputy I'll move Mayor Malash. Yeah. Okay. Because I do have a couple comments I think that the town needs to make, whether it's Chris or myself. There, there is a concern here with regards to the property. Uh, anyone else like to say anything first with regards to this? Well, we have received it. Now we're just going to open it up for discussion. Like having talked to it, the building department, there is a problem here with regards to Receive and. 
but discussed whether we're going to do something further to it. Okay. Okay, so we're going to vote on the motion just to receive it, and then we can deal with it after, okay? That's okay. Fine. Motion to receive the... Motion carries. Okay, now, I have a concern speaking with our building department. Like, this is Crown land, or our land. Chris, Chris could you speak to this? Uh, three your worship. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the issue. I guess what I would recommend for council to do is, is, is um, suggest that uh, administration prepare a report to outline uh, the concerns and the issues on behalf of the town with respect to um, you know the liability and 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 the uh, the things that come with you know landscaping and take care taking care of things on town property. So uh, that might be best the best way to resolve this or to at least get it to that next step it, so that uh, you guys have a little more information on, on your side and, and you're better able to uh, deal with this. So. And that's what I would like to see. I prefer that because, like you said, there are conditions that could come back to haunt us, you know. So that's if we could get a recommendation to that effect or something else. Counselor Simon? Through your worship, I, I'm sure that the people involved here, if we had to do something with that property, and, and I'm sure they're well aware that we can go in there and do what we have to do with that property. I, I, I don't see where there's going to be a liability here I, I, for what they have there. I, I, you know, I might be wrong, but I can't see a liability there. I, I really can't. I, so that's, that's my, uh, my view, uh, your worship, but uh, I don't see a problem here. I, you know, I think we're making more of a problem than what, what there is there. But there's always the chance that they sell the property, someone buys it, next thing you know, it is not, the property line isn't here, it's over here. So then we have, like, I just want to eliminate anything down the road that may, you know, come back to bite us, that's all. Councilor Snivy. Yeah, I understand your worship, but uh, here again, I'm sure that the, uh, the people involved here know that. They know where their property lines are. And like I say, they're only beautifying the area. I mean, we can't... Uh, I, I might be wrong saying this, but we, we just can't come after people for something minor like that when they're beautifying the area. That's, that's the way I look at it anyway. So, I mean, they're doing something positive to beautify our area, but yet I think that I, I think we're overreacting to something that's very small here. Thank you. And I agree. It, it does look better, and I am all for them doing what they're doing, but we're going to do it the right way. That's all I say. We have, was it uh, Councilor Bergman? Uh, thank you, Three Wars. Um, they're here tonight. Uh, we appreciate you doing what you're doing and improving, improving our town, but I, I do have to agree the right thing for us to do is make sure that we're not putting ourselves into any jeopardy. Um, do the report. There's no, it's not like you're going to plant something else this week. Or, I understand you're going away for the next couple of months. Uh, you'll be south, and uh, we've got lots of time to have a look at it, make sure administration identifies any issues there could be. And if there's not, then it's great. Everybody knows that that's town property, and should we need to do something there someday, we can come in and do it. But due diligence is the right thing to do, and uh, I believe we need to see that report first. Thanks, sir. Mr. Nepsey? Uh, through your worship, I just wanted to add, uh, um, Although not setting a precedent by dealing with it a certain way right now, there are instances throughout the town where, where people are, um, I guess, uh, maintaining or landscaping town property. And if there's an instance where it, it may not, you know, um, uh, I'm trying to find my words here, but it may not be something that council likes. It might be something different Then you know, you want to be consistent, right? So that's why I think the approach would be to do... To, to, uh, the report and have the information and then that way moving forward uh, when you have something else come up you have something to fall back on uh, that you've done your homework and your due diligence that way so thank you sir anything further recommendation i would suggest that we do get a recommendation then from administration 
with regards to any issues we may have with re regards to that property. And one of them isn't that you're looking after it, believe me. Motion? Yep. Yep. Not... Through your worship, we're not asking, asking these people tonight to remove it. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. I'll... Can we get a motion to that effect? That Country Bjorkman, Deputy Mayor Malash, any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you very much, sir and madam, and keep up the good work, and Merry Christmas. Item B, the Windsor Weather Modification Awareness Group with reference to solar radiation management. Moved by Councilor Bjorkman. To receive. To receive. Okay. Supported by Councilor Bondi. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item C, Save a Nation, and this is a letter thanking the town for their support and an update on the not willing host status on renewable energy projects. Deputy Mayor Malash, moves to receipt, and Councilor Snively, any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item D, Windsor Essex County Environment Committee, November 26, 2015, meeting minutes. Move received, Councilor Bjorkman, supported by Councilor Snyder. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item E, the Town of Lakeshore Area, number three, Dog Pound, 2016 budget. Move received by Councilor Bondi. Councilor Snyder supports Councilor Bondi. I don't know if it's appropriate now. Maybe we can receive the minutes, but I do want to speak on the dog pound issue after. Or should I speak right now? Okay. So as you know, this is my second term as the rep on the regional dog pound committee. And uh, we just had a, a meeting a couple months ago or a month ago, and actually MP Hardcastle had this idea, which was an idea that we had before as well. She's like, eventually, this dog pound model is no longer going to work. And I wholeheartedly agree with her with both of my feet. And I would just, uh, I have had a conversation with Melanie Coulter, the executive director of the Humane Society, and I've had a conversation with Russ and Donna, just a quick little conversation, and said, can we start having this discussion? And I know it's a very high-level discussion, but I think it could take five, 10 years, maybe 15 to get there. So the dog pound right now is, in my opinion, that's why I want to bring in the professionals, is a very outdated model. It's a model that was used in the 1960s, 1970s, when stray dogs were overrun. It's really not a progressive model of animal welfare. It's very cost effective. We, we don't pay a whole lot, around $20,000, $25,000 a year, but it only fixes our problem. Like, we're throwing money and then we're saying, we don't have an issue with stray dogs. But it's not solution focused, and it's not accessible or modern. It, um, it's just a holding center for stray dogs. I would love to see, in Sherry Bondi's world of animal welfare, I would love to see something more centralized, perhaps an Essex Center where we have an intake, a satellite office for the Humane Society, where we have intake for dogs, for cats, for, I don't know, gerbils, something more progressive, something that is, is, is more fitting for what our residents need. As you can see, Essex led the way in the tethering bylaw. We were the first municipality locally to have that tethering bylaw. Now all the other municipalities are following suit. So it just, to me, it, it might make more sense in the long run if we, could ha if we could bring business into Essex, and this would be one of those businesses. And instead of driving all the way out to Puce, where the old dump is, we could ha you know, hope to have this business here. So I would love council's support just to have beginning conversations about a new model of animal welfare. I encourage anyone to take a drive out to our pound. Sure, it's okay, but is it up to standard? And, I, and, and that's, I don't think it is. I think I want more. And if all of our residents saw the pound, I think that they would want more for their animals too. We're doing really well with stray cats, and I think we could even do better. And if we had a satellite office out in the county, we could, we could attack the cat problem too. So it's just, um, 
it's a high level conversation and there's a lot of red tape because we have agreements with animal control officers, we have agreements with St. Clair College, but there are ways I think that it can be done. And maybe there's not a way it can be done, but until we have that conversation, we don't know. So I'm seeking council support to, to have Donna Hunter and perhaps Russ and myself being the dog pound member and anybody else that wants to go to this meeting to meet with Melanie Coulter sometime in the new year just to say, you know, is this feasible for us in the five year, 10 year? And, and then we can work backwards from there, whether it be fundraising or looking at land or looking at what we have to do to get out of the current agreements. I would just love, 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 love to have that conversation. So just looking, seeking council support to, uh, to have that conversation. Councilor Oaks. Thank you, Worship. So Sherry, would this be, uh, would this be specific just to Essex or are you talking about something that is county uh, structured? Because my point is, is why don't we, why don't we change the direction to something that gets our argument being if we get the pound in Essex, it's centrally located and more accessible and have the county input into it and help sustain it. Dr. Bonnie? If I may, thank you. I would love to, so right now in the regional dog pound there's Tecumseh, LaSalle, Lakeshore and Essex. If Essex pulls out, then the other municipalities would have to pay more. So essentially, I would love to see it regional, yeah. right? And, and I think that would be fantastic. I think it's another driver to drive residents into our town. So I'd love, it, I think it'd have to be like an all or nothing. We'd have to all embrace it or all not. But Essex could lead the way and, and get the plan together and then go to Lakeshore and say, look, this could work. And then go to LaSalle and go to Tecumseh and say, this could work. There's another option out there. And whether the four municipalities agree on it at the end of the day, that's to be determined. That's way down the road. But we have to see what it looks like for ourselves yet. And we have to see, first step is seeing if council's willing to have those conversations. Council vote. Thank you, Your Worship. I, I think we can have those conversations. I think we can have them in the form of our county council representatives raise it at a county council meeting that says we have an interest in starting the discussions on a regional dog pound located right inside the center of the county, which is in Essex, and see if there would be any interest to sustain it and move it with that support coming from county council to do that. Because it would be, you're right, it would be much more accessible if it was in the heart of the county as opposed to out there in Pews, which I don't think it's being exercise to its full opportunity. I have a question of Councilor Bundy. Us four municipalities, the rest of them look after their own, is it? How do they do it? Okay, thank you very much. Deputy Mayor Rush. Thank you, and I, I agree with what Councilor Volks and Councilor Bundy are saying, uh, but let's put a report together first, and then um, the Mayor and I can bring that back to Essex County Council and, and try and push it along. So I believe there's a motion on the table to accept the budget, and then after that I'll make a motion that we get a report. All in favor? Motion carries. Councilor Bond. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that Essex Council receive a report on um, future dog pound initiatives. initiatives in Essex County. I don't know. Everybody knows what, I'm, what I mean. Yep. <laughs> Supported by Councilor Snidely. Any questions? All in favor. Motion carries. Thank you. Item F, Harrow Health Center Board of Directors, an important announcement for the residents of McGregor and the surrounding area regarding the McGregor Health Center and that the trial period expires on March 31st, 2016. Deputy Mayor Malash. I'll move and then I have a comment once there's a seconder. Okay. Supported by Councilor Bjorkman. Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, three-year worship. I, I applaud the Harrow Family Health Team for making that effort to try and keep that site open. And uh, very unfortunate that the uh, MOH LTC doesn't, uh, doesn't have the funding or the insight to trying to have uh, fund a clerk for that location because it just doesn't make any sense to have to fund a nurse practitioner for that location 
and not have the administrative back, uh, administration to back that position up. Um, so I applaud what they've done. They've tried to make a go of it, and they've uh, applied for funding again for another year, uh, and I believe that they have not had their answer yet at this point in time. Uh, they're working again at uh, five days a week, and uh, I think we've all probably had an opportunity to read that letter. So um, what I'd like to see happen is I'd like to see the town of Essex, and although we don't have any funding right now that we can use to... Uh, to put towards this. I'd like to see us perhaps send a letter off to the MOH LTC and also to our Lynn, the Erie um, St. Clair Lynn, to ask both of those uh, bodies if they could find a way to fund a clerical position if there's a nurse practitioner funding um, in the works for next year because that's the only way this is going to work. Um, Amherstburg has uh, been asked to, uh, to it's, they've been asked to see what they can, they can provide or, or, or do with this health um, location. But I think you're going to probably find that they're going to come back with the same answer. I know Amherstburg is very tight with their funds, um, with the position that they're in right now. Um, and the same with Essex, and, and we're kind of looking at the position that, uh, you know, we've in the past helped out the Harrow Family Health Team to, uh, you know, it was sort of seed money, really, in a sense, to try and get that operation off the ground because we knew it was going to be good for the town of Harrow and the surrounding area. It was uh, a well-driven community effort and uh, <coughs> should be modeled after across the province based on what they did because they did such a great job. But at this point in time, I think the town of Essex has to say, and you're probably going to see the same thing with Amherstburg, I believe, that uh, we'd like to see the funding come from the province to fund any health issues or opening of any clinics because we're getting into a very um, sensitive area. I know I've been contacted and I know several council members have been contacted by other um, medical groups within the community within the town of Essex and uh, have been asked, uh, you know, if you're going to continue to help in the, hair, in the medical um, sense, we'd like some help as well. And that's where I'm, you know, I'm starting to think to myself that uh, we have to be very careful where we tread here. So next best situation is that we offer support to the Harrow Family Health Team, in my belief. And in the way that we can do it is by sending off a letter and showing the Ministry of Health and the LIN, local LIN, that we are definitely believe that this is a, a good situation with this uh, health clinic or McGregor clinic and we want that to be permanent and we need funding that shows that this is going to be permanent so the people there in, the, in that area understand that this is not just an, um, a temporary situation they have to believe that this is for them to want to be able to be part of it they've got to know that there's going to be permanent funding there and the way that it's being funded right now it doesn't it doesn't do very good for that situation. So my suggestion is going to be that we send this letter off. Um, I, I'd like, before we send the letter off, um, I'd like to whoever's going to write the letter to contact um, um, Harold Family Health Team, uh, Margo and Merrill, perhaps to uh, to find out what they'd like specifically. If there's anything specific that they'd like in the letter uh, that they believe may perhaps. Um, give us more credence or, or more um, more grit in the letter and uh, whatever we can do to help that would be great um, when the letter goes out I'd like to copy uh, AMO President Gary McNamara Minister, well we're going to send it to the Minister of Health and uh, Lynn but also the town of Amherstburg so they know what's going on and I think that's probably all unless somebody else here can think of who else we need to contact. But that would be a good start. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, sir. I have Councillor Bjorkman and then Snively. Thank you to your worship. Uh, it was a very good letter, very informative, and it, it shows that the amount of work you're doing trying to get support from MOHLTC. Uh, at the very end, 
uh, where you're right, it's a critical time for the McGregor Clinic. We need the area residents, the town of Essex, the town of Amherstburg to join with the Herald Center and put forth a strong unified message. So I would like to, on top of what uh, Deputy Mayor is saying, is, is to put it on our, our website. This is the same thing as us trying to save Harrow High School to me. It's, it's, uh, it's an effort that needs to be pushed. And any way that we can get members of the community, especially members in the McGregor area, to get that information to them that this is, this is what we're looking at right now. They're looking at not having that clinic next year. And if we can get that information out and get them on board to send their letters in, those are the kind of things that will resonate with the ministry that actually the people in the community are, are getting behind it. So uh, I'd say on our web page, any, anything that we can do um, to get that information to the residents, to get them involved would, uh, would be a big help. Thank you, sir. Councillor Snyder. Through your worship, um, I agree with uh, the Deputy Mayor and, and Councillor Bjorkman. Uh, th this, this, is a, this is a provincial um, matter. And, you know, I, I look, I, I want the ratepayers to be well aware what the town of Essex has done in the past. Uh, it's very important for this medical center. I, I agree 100%. But I'm looking at reports. You know, we did hold a mortgage for them for a million dollars. We went beyond, you know, our duties. We also funded for a nurse practitioner. Sure, we got a grant, but there was a net expense at the end. We did upgrades, and I, I, I just want the public to be well aware what the town of Essex has done in the past, in, in 2014, 13, 12, and 11. Uh, you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars that we put into this medical center. And we're using ratepayers' money to do this. And it should be the province funding this here. I think we went beyond to help the medical center out. Do I want to see it closed? Absolutely not. And uh, Merle's here tonight. I, I don't know if he's going to speak tonight, if council is going to allow him to speak tonight. I, I'd like to have him speak because I want to hear what they have to say. But uh, as far as funding, I think it should come from the province. Thank you, Your Worship. I would just like to say he's not on the agenda, but if you would like him to speak, you have the opportunity to make that motion and allow it. Thank you, Worship. That's what I was about to do. I was going to put a motion forward look for a second to allow them to speak and, and update us on the current status where we are. Okay, we have a motion to allow it. Any questions? Got to vote. Um, I'll ask that we do put a five-minute limit on it, if we could. Yep. And as protocol on other. Okay. All in favor? Motion carries. Sir? I think all you have to do is get on the mic on that side and hit the button, right? The purple button. Okay, that one you might need to use a side one and top one. There you go. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening, Your Worship. Uh, good evening, Councillors, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you very much uh, for allowing me to briefly speak this evening. I, I shall be brief. I didn't anticipate having an opportunity to address you. Uh, I'm here to to encourage you and uh, to support uh, the lobbying effort, I think, that has to now occur with the province, with the LIN, as Deputy Mayor uh, Malosh has pointed out. Uh, it, it's very important at this point because we're in the midst of submitting to the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care uh, the, I think, very compelling case of why this clinic has to be made a permanent clinic and be funded in a manner that permits it to properly operate. As Deputy Malosh has pointed out, and hopefully our letter helped uh, educate, uh, the Ministry, although we greatly appreciate the fact they stepped up and, and permitted uh, a nurse practitioner to be placed there and funded by the Ministry, uh, they weren't able to come to the table with any operational funds, and, and, and tragically, uh, they did not fund for any support staff or a men's staff. And, and that's really been the stumbling block that we've been encountering and trying to keep that clinic operating at full capacity. It has certainly been demonstrated by the community that it's needed. 
It's been a long-standing need. We've known that for years. We've all recognized that McGregor has been an underserviced community as far as primary health care is concerned. And the clinic has been inundated with, with people. I, I think the, the numbers clearly support making it permanent, uh, but it's a question of getting the ministry to agree. We all recognize that uh, the provincial budget in, in health care as a whole is, is strained. Uh, we know that the Ministry of Health is in the midst of reorganizing uh, primary health care and what that will mean for McGregor and what it will mean for the entire province is, is a little unknown at this point. Uh, so the more compelling and, and, and uh, I guess logical case that can be put to the ministry and early in the process so we're not coming up against the, the funding termination for the trial period in the end of March, uh, the better. So again, thank you for uh, the efforts I'm hearing might be coming forward from the town. I really appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate all the support the town has given in the past. It, it, it's certainly recognized that the town has gone above and beyond. It is appreciated. That clinic would not be there but for the support of the town. Let's be perfectly clear about that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor Snively. Uh, through your worship, Merrill, um, a question. The Harrell Clinic on their annual budget, okay, it, you do have a surplus of money. I'm sure you do have a surplus of money at the, at the Harrell, Harrell Clinic. On an operational basis, no, we do not. Uh, we're funded by the Ministry of Health. And any money that we do not spend for operations actually has to be refunded to the Ministry of Health uh, in any given budget year. So they, they will pay for certain aspects of uh, nurse practitioners and, and um, you know, medical uh, officer assistants, et cetera. But if we don't spend that money, it's got to be sent back to them. Through your worship again. Yes, so you're telling me there's no money there in a surplus? at the Harold facility. I, I don't I, I don't want to mislead here. What I'm saying is on an annual basis for what we're funded to operate, there is not surpluses. What we have has been been very fortunate that we've had a community come forward and incredibly support uh, the McGre excuse me, the, the Harrell Health Center, and they did so with uh, unheard of fundraising that occurred throughout the years. And so we're fortunate to, to the extent that we were recently in a position, as you're, as you're well aware, uh, to finally repay the town for the, the mortgage that was granted and make sure the taxpayers were taken care of. So there's a distinction, I guess, from the, the amounts that are fundraised and were fundraised in, in versus operational budgets. But Merle, you've you, you got you to gotta understand from our end here, Okay, the figures I give you, okay, that I, gi I give the public here, are actual figures that the town put out. Now, uh, uh, a lot of that we didn't recoup. You understand that? Well, I, I'm not quite sure. Like a nurse, nurse practitioner, for example. It did cost the ratepayers money. It wasn't all funded by the government. And I'm not going to dispute, once again, the town has been very generous, and I stress to you as a town, as ratepayers, uh, that the town has been excellent with respect to the support of the Harold Health Center, and it's greatly appreciated. Uh, you have, through grants and other things, helped us out with a nurse practitioner that's been located at the Harold Health Center, I, I think, from near inception. I'm not quite sure of the exact timing. Well, one, uh, just one further question for you. This McGregor Health Center, okay, we're looking at, you're looking at, you're looking at, when you come before, $25,000 from us, and you were going to go to Amherstburg and approach him on twenty-five. Am I right there? At $50,000, wasn't it? It was approximately that number. I don't have the exact amount. May I ask you this? There isn't $50,000 worth of funds at the heroin to help out the McGregor, or is this going to just be a standalone operation? Well, what, what I can answer about McGregor is that we have funded through funds at the Harrell Health Center, if I can put it that way, 
uh, extensively because the ministry has not paid for anything at McGregor other than the nurse practitioner. So we have spent to equip medical equipment, uh, computers, photocopiers, etc. And we've also had to take away uh, staffing and other funds to, to pay for somebody to be at uh, the McGregor Center. For instance, we have hired a full-time person to staff on a clerical basis at McGregor to get us through to the trial period. Once again, those are not ministry funds. They are simply funds that are coming from the Health, Health Center. So we've stepped into the breach. We recognize that the town has been incredibly generous and wasn't able to do anything more at this time. So we've stepped into that breach and have said, if this is going to have a true chance to succeed, we have to do everything possible at this time to convince the ministry that this is a viable clinic that should be fully funded moving forward. I appreciate that, Merrill. But <clears throat> once again, I. I it's a provincial obligation, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to speak for the rest of council, I'm sure. We all feel the same way. It's, it's a provincial obligation. And uh, when we have a government that can spend money like they spend money and, on gas plants that don't even get off the ground, I mean, it, they should be able to come up with funding that we're, you're seeking here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor Vokes. Thank you, Worship. Merle, I'm going to be a little more to the point, to be quite frank with you. Um, the assumption is whether it's re fallacy or reality, is there some money to be had to support the, the clinic in McGregor? Do you personally see that as, as, as fallacy or reality? Moving forward, unless the ministry will pay for the necessary support staff, yes. that clinic will not be viable. Thank you. So my next question is, come April 1st, 2016, if the town of Essex can't convince the government to participate in this, April 1st, will that clinic close? Once again, if, if there isn't the necessary funding from the ministry or if we can't have discussions with the Lynn or with the town of Amherstburg or others, uh, I'm not certain how it can be a viable clinic. So if I could, where are we in terms of Amherstburg right now as you see it today? They've received our submission, and, and uh, as far as I'm aware, they're still in the midst of budget deliberations, and, and we've been advised that we have to hold tight and, and await uh, the conclusion of their budget deliberations before we'll know what will happen. Uh, we're doing what we can, uh, Councillor Vokes, to, to make sure that this continues on. That's one of the reasons why we wrote the letter to, to the area residents and to, to Council, both the town of Essex and the town of Amherstburg. We're looking for support in our lobbying efforts. We're putting together, as I've indicated, what I believe to be a very compelling case to the ministry. And there's no reason why, in my respectful opinion, that once they review that compelling case, that they shouldn't take the steps that are necessary to fund that clinic. However, neither you nor I can, can predict what the ministry may do. Would it be to our advantage as a town to start lobbying our local provincial politicians for assistance to expedite that uh, document you for them with, with hopes of that the municipal or the province supports it? I don't assume that would hurt, right, in doing that? I strongly encourage any lobbying efforts that would see us have that clinic made permanent. So if we got the town of Amherstburg to come to the pumps, what would our financial end be? Half of? For the purposes of my attendance tonight and the, the purposes of circulating that letter, it wasn't to seek further funds. It wasn't to seek funds from the town whatsoever. It was to seek support, Councillor Vokes, because as we've heard from many people tonight, uh, it's, my also, it's also my belief that the province should be funding that clinic. Uh, it shouldn't be incumbent upon the residents through their donations or other things to, to fund, fund that McGregor Clinic. And so tonight, I'm not here asking for anything other than support, lobbying efforts, whatever we can do as a group uh, to work together to convince so, the ministry. So if I could, what turned the tides? Because last time you were here, was it not $25,000 you were seeking? It, it, indeed we were, and, and the town... 
it, we're, we're not asking for that today because the town has spoken on that, about the difficulties they had in being able to come to the table to help us with that. After that uh, decision was made by the town, the board of the Harold Health Center met again, and because we believe so strongly that McGregor is in desperate need of this primary care, the board as a whole said, well, notwithstanding that we're not being funded with this, notwithstanding the ministry is not coming to the table, we're going to do what we have to do to get us through to the end of the trial period, and we've hired somebody additional at the expense of the Harold Health Center, not again being funded by the ministry whatsoever to help McGregor. I just, I'm just going to close with the fact that if all your financial documents would suggest that you're in, in a financial dilemma that and the province doesn't support it, I think we better do whatever we can do collectively as two councils, Amherstburg and Essex, and some people are going to look at me right now, but do what we have to do to keep that facility open to be a medical service provider for the residents of the McGregor and surrounding area. I don't think closing it is the answer as long as all documents support in full and responsibly that that facility as of April 1st will close because it can't be maintained. Thanks for your time. Thank you, sir. Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, through Your Worship. I just wondered if uh, the board or the administration at the Harrell Family Health Team has already been in contact with our MPP, Taraz Nadashak, uh, to discuss the issue. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just wondering what he already knows. I've, I've, I've circulated this. It's been circulated to, to the MPPs, I believe. Yes. I just wondered if he knew, what, uh, if he's informed as to what's going on. Now, has there been an actual, specifically, sat down with him and requested, or has he just received correspondence? He's received correspondence. And, and this is certainly on our agenda. Uh, obviously, we're here tonight. We're going to keep taking whatever effort is needed to make sure this is uh, known by the people that should know. And the, Mr. Switzer, uh, obviously the, the Lynn has already been advised of our, our situation as well. Uh, and given the changes that are happening, I suspect that Lynn will have a lot to say about uh, how all primary care is delivered in this area. Okay, thank you. Council votes. I'll just uh, make a motion to this when the time's right. Okay, I would just like to say I agree with everything pretty well that's been said. Deputy Mayor Malash recommends that we send this message with all of us, and, and that's what's in this motion that we have here, to receive and receive and support, you know. So the recommendations that you were going to make, Richard, I think with the, a few additions with the Lynn, like the Lynn isn't in here, but we could add the Lynn in. Also, what you're seeking is, that's what they're looking for too, in this whole project. So we can do that as a body that you're recommending through this motion here, with just a couple additions where to go to, like our MP, MPP and the Lynn, you know, so. We're all seeking the same same thing, so. And we haven't received this motion yet, you know, and, and when, when we do receive it, the motion's on the floor to receive it and support. I don't think the word supported was in there, so, no. So we would need to make uh, the motion to receive and support what we're all talking about here right now. So, to the, to the motion, yes, sir. So, and then uh, then put another letter in as to how, or another motion in as to how I'd like to support, or? or we, yes, we had the motion, you moved to receive and support, we voted on that, that's patent. Then we- No, we haven't. We haven't so voted we had on it on the yet. floor yeah. while we're we having brought them. We had another motion that we shouldn't have done, but uh, we did it, so another mistake, but we're trying to correct it here right now. <laughs> So I, I think we can receive and support, and then I think administration okay. understands, council understands what we want to do. Yeah. We've had an, enough discussion okay. on it. So. Okay, Thank so, Councillor Bondi. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just wondering if our county reps can give a push through the county for this. Is it, like it, it affects Amherstburg, it affects Essex. I'm sure there's the odd LaSalle resident that goes there, the odd Kingsville resident that goes there. Is it not applicable at the county level? And anything we send on, we should send to our MPP too. Exactly. Okay, so on the motion, right there, there's no council vote. Thank you for giving me the time to speak to it. I, I just think we should attach CC, Therese, and Amherstburg, both. That'll be in the next motion. So we're just going to receive okay. this report and support right. it. Okay. All favor of the motion. Motion carries. Now we can have. Thank you very much for your help here. Now we need a motion. Deputy Mayor Malash, you're going to make one? Thank you. Yes, uh, through you, Your Worship. So uh, this can, uh, anybody feel free to jump in once I'm going here. Uh, but a letter to the MOHLTC and to the LIN asking for uh, not only for support for the nurse practitioner position for the clinic, but also for some uh, administrative costs and a clerical uh, administrative uh, body to help run the clinic. And uh, that would be copied to um, Amherstburg. Uh, MPP Taraz Nadashak, the Minister of, uh, obviously it's going to the Minister of Health already in the Lynn, and uh, AMO. And the only reason I, 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 like to, I like to attach AMO to these because um, they see in general what's happening throughout the province, and sometimes they have some insight and they'll come back and help us out uh, in, in, in giving us some direction or push our, push our effort. <coughs> so uh, I'd like them copied as well. Was, and if there's anybody else that needs to be copied, please, Council, step in. Okay. So we have the motion on the floor. Supported by Council Oaks. Okay. Comment, Council Oaks, the motion. Go ahead, sir. No, not so much. I, I would really like to see an amendment to that, or an addendum, if you will, in terms of it, it, because it is the government, right? And they have a tendency to drag their feet a little bit and recognizing that March 31st is really our crucial date that ask if we could receive a sponsor within like 21 business days or something something that really instills with them that time is of the essence in terms of because if we just leave it open-ended the cabinets could shuffle it and shuffle it and shuffle it with and I'm not saying that 21 day will will solidify but it does suggest we're under the, the, the you know some timelines a little bit I would just say 21 days might not be enough time. I, I don't know exactly when they go back. It probably don't go back to the left of the first of the year. So. No, 21 days is just a period I'm asking if they could respond to us within. within. But they may not be sitting in 21 days, I'm saying. Like, I, I don't know how much time they get off. They're off now and forever almost, seems. <laughs> but anyways, okay. So I, I agree with that. Uh, we should put some kind of time frame in there. 21 days is just as good as any other time frame that we could put in. It just says to them that we're looking for a specific time frame. Please hurry, because we want it as soon as possible. Hey, so you're open to that? I'm okay with that. Um, okay. But just to comment on that, yes, sir. Um, I, and, the, and these people here, Brian Gray will know this, as well as uh, Margot and Merrill, uh, that the Ministry of Health is very difficult to get to, to push along. Um, the hospitals, the health teams, um, the Board of Health, which I sit on too, we struggle every year because they don't announce their, two th their 2016 budget year is from April 1st and on till March 31st of 2017. And we probably won't even know what we're going to get as far as a budget or percent increase until September. So hopefully they help us out quicker than that and give us an answer, but they're really slow in moving. Unfortunately, I'm I'm worried about this. To be honest okay. with you. Anything further to the motion? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Councilor Snively. It's a motion supported by 
Council votes. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Mr. Gray. Hit the button on the side, Brian. Way back. Yep. And now hit the grip purple one. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Council, for giving me an opportunity to uh, have some comments with regards to this. Uh, I think everyone here is well aware of uh, my devotion and dedication to the success of the Harrell Family Health Team. and. Uh, um, I guess that I had been the person who had been probably most responsible as far as this whole uh, McGregor situation went. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of a brief history on it. You know, it goes back to uh, when Wayne Miller was the CAO and, uh, and, and we shared the vision of uh, being able to provide this uh, uh, much needed service in McGregor and uh, so much so that we included it in the design of the community center there. And if you recall on the opening events when uh, Bruce Crozier actually said, and behind me there's going to be the satellite of the Harrell Family Health Team. And he was pretty proud to make that announcement. And uh, Bruce and what he did for us in the whole family health team development in this area was just tremendous. So it was, a, it was something that we pushed for for a long time with the ministry. And, uh, and we certainly had some trouble getting them to expand and even allow the nurse practitioner there. So the way that we saw fit to do it was to use some of the surplus funds that we had to support the addition of an administration staff there. And part of the big reason was that the ministry had to know that the pilot project was going to be successful, that there was going to be the necessary demand there to uh, fund the whole facility as it saw fit. So the board of the day was, uh, um, was pleased to be able to participate in providing the funding for the administration staff uh, in agreement with the ministry with the hopeful eventual outcome that when the demand was there, the ministry would then come to the table and provide the balance of the funding. So hopefully that's still the condition that exists. Uh, the funding, I believe, was supposed to have been for this fiscal year, and uh, hopefully the end result will show them from the numbers and, uh, and from what's gone on there that it's now time for the ministry to fulfill its original obligation and provide the necessary funding to move ahead. Uh, my only other comment that I'd like to add is it certainly is a provincial funding matter. And I know that on numerous occasions when I've spoken with uh, the esteemed uh, Gary McNamara in his role at, all, at uh, the Ontario Municipal Association in that, that they've been very adamant that they don't want to get into these provincial funding and have more downloads coming to municipalities. So uh, I certainly encourage you to uh, uh, support the application and to, uh, uh, and to look very favorably, hopefully, that the ministry will come through with its obligation to the process. Thank you very much, sir. Any questions to Mr. Gray? Deputy Mayor Malash. Just a general comment. Brian, thank you for all your efforts with the McGregor Clinic. I know you, you had put your heart and soul in that and did a good job. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Happy holidays to everyone, if yes. I may add that and last I, and I would, Yeah, thanks. And I would just add that maybe when we get this letter sent to him, a couple of comments he just made just now, you know, with regards to speaking with the ministry and everything, they need to be reminded of what happened back in the day. And I, I think that we'll probably be touching base with you, Brian, to put that little notice in there, you know, that they... Yeah, I'd be happy we to remind. We made an agreement. I'd be yeah. happy to remind them of that. Good. Well, that's that's good. Thank you very much, Councillor Snyder. Through your worship, uh, once again, thank you, Brian. Um, I know uh, back back in the days, if you recall, when I was sitting where Ron is as the mayor of the town, that uh, we started that committee up, which eventually led to this, and and it was a lot of work by you. We give you direction, and you took it, and you took off with it, and. Thanks once again. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Brian.
Thank you. Item 9, committee meeting minutes. A, Cullen Park committee meeting from November 11th, 2015. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malash, supported by Councillor Vokes. What's the comment? Okay, John, sir. Can we accept minutes A through D? Yes, we can, and if anyone has a question, There's you can bring it up, okay? So, There's that's a, worship in D, if you want There is one, yep. In D. Okay, A through D, and there is a recommendation in D. That being the funding for the basement flooding to the tune of 395.50 being denied. Oh, oh, the one before that also. Okay. Deputy Mayor Malash? So I'm, I'm saying received and approved as recommended. As recommended, okay. And same with Council Volks, supported that. I think he was a seconder. Yep, okay. All in favor of the motion? Cool. Opposed? Oh, sorry. No, okay. In favor? Okay, we haven't. It's passed. Thanks. Maybe she did. The next item is item number 13, bylaws. Bylaw number 1474 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the December 21st. 2015 regular council meeting. Moved by Councillor Snivy, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Questions? On favor. Motion carries. Item. Okay, just before the clerk calls for number 14, we all know what that is. Uh, I'll start on my extreme right. Deputy Mayor Malosh, if you want to say anything to the folks at home with regards to what's happening in, what, four days? <laughs> Five days? Okay. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, just want to wish um, our media friends, first of all, they're uh, here on a regular basis, and our camera crew that's here so eagerly uh, bi-weekly to uh, film us. Uh, we appreciate all their efforts and uh, the good reporting that they do for us and then spreading the good news that, uh, of what we do here at uh, Town Council. I'd also like to thank administration for all the efforts that they put in to uh, make us look so good as a council through the year. Uh, I know it's tiring, and I know that sometimes we can be uh, demanding, and uh, we don't make your life that easy, but you uh, continue to smile at us regardless. So I thank you for that. And to my fellow councillors, uh, Merry Christmas to you and your families. Um, I know sometimes we all don't get along, but uh, in the end we do get along because uh, we want what's best for the town. And to all the residents out there, thank you uh, for supporting us, and uh, thank you for viewing, and uh, thank you for giving us feedback through the year. It's very important that we have feedback from, from our residents, because that's what tells us what direction we should be going in. So uh, Merry Christmas to all of you and all of your families, and uh, hope to see you in 2016. Councilor Snively. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, I'd like to, to wish the media uh, Merry Christmas and all our administrative staff. I, I won't bug you the rest of the week. I'll probably call you tomorrow. But uh, all, all of council and I, I think we, we really move forward this year. We, we, we've got a lot of things done this year. We're moving in the right direction. And uh, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas to all the constituents out there, uh, all the ratepayers, everybody in Essex and have a good, solid, safe, Christmas and wish everybody Merry Christmas. Thank you. Contra Bergman. Thank you through your worship. Uh, I too would just like to wish our residents a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, again, I'll echo the thanks our administration for all the work that they do for us and, and to thank our families, everybody that's up here and administration and counselors. Uh, our families spend a lot of time and do a lot of things uh, without us. And uh, we appreciate them uh, putting up with the, uh, the time we're away, but uh, we're looking forward to a couple of weeks now where we can spend it with them. So again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, sir. Council votes. Merry Christmas, everybody. I want to talk about what's important. Now, how many more meetings, Cheryl, you got? Or one more. When? When is it? The 8th. Darn it. I thought 
thought we could go at you tonight, darn it. Thank you. I'd like to echo the sentiments that my other colleagues said, but I'd like to use my time because it is the season of giving. There's a lot of people who want to help the Syrian refugees. I've been giving a lot of email contacts from all of my political friends, and if anybody out there or in the media wants to make a donation to help, there's 17 uh, Syrians that are coming to Leamington, and you can make a donation to the Leamington Mennonite Church, and uh, for more information, you can contact me. So, uh, you know, it's the Canadian way to make people feel welcome. We are a country of immigration, and, uh, and they're here, and I think it's important that we make them feel, feel welcome, and, and their success is going to contribute to our success. So that's what I'd like to take my time for today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd just like to say, in case anyone's wondering where our CAO, Russ Phillips, is, and Councillor Caxero, Nothing wrong with either one of them. Billy's away on vacation with his family, and Russ has gone home out west for a couple of weeks, so they're both healthy, and that's the reason they're not here this evening. But on behalf of administration, and all of our council members have done it, I would like to wish everyone out there in Essex mainly, but the whole Windsor, Essex County area, Merry Christmas, God bless, best of health. Looking for adjournment. Councilor Snively, Councilor Bjorkman. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas.